Hey guys, Voles C here. Hope that you're having a good week. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the Akari Company sectorial for NA2 in Infinity N4. Um, I have covered Ikari Company before in a previous video, but it was more than two years ago. We've had an addition changed since then, since um, N3 uh, gave way to N4. But that's still one of my favorite uh, factions to play in Infinity. Um, a few reasons why. Um, Ikari Company is not like the absolute S tier best faction. But the good thing about that is that nobody's going to look at you and feel like that you're crutching on the overpowered stuff in the best faction. Having said that, you're not playing a totally gimped, worthless faction that does ha have access to, to no good things. Um, you still have a really good fighting chance in competitions, which is why I think they're actually a pretty good tournament faction to play. Um, another really cool thing about them is that they are not sort of wildly popular and you're unlikely to be sort of having mirror matches with your friends if there's a group of you starting out and you pick a Kari company. It's just not often that you're going to be running into other people who play the same sectorial as you, which makes you a bit more special. You go to tournaments and you see that there are people playing Vanilla Nomads and Corregidor, popular factions. You see people playing Vanilla Combined Army, you know, Shazvasti, fairly popular factions. Caledonia, stuff like that. These are factions you see a lot of, but Ikari Company, not so much, which is um, kind of a good thing for being a bit more of a, a unique unique kind of uh, player, which is great. Um, I will say that Ikari Company um, bear the most resemblance to uh, JSA, the Japanese Secessionist Army, because they have a lot of stuff in common there, but Ikari just sort of take that and make it a little bit more unique by bringing in a few things from other um, other factions and sectorials as tools. And for me personally, I actually like Ikari Company more than JSA because Ikari Company actually has um, pretty much all of the really good tools that JSA has, but Ikari Company also brings in a couple of extra things that JSA just can't have. And we're going to go over that during the video. So strap yourselves in. Um, I'm definitely overdue for one of these uh, sectorials, uh, sectorial reviews. We've had our campaign going. I've been really busy, but time to just launch into it and break down all of the units and profiles and give some overall strategic and list building thoughts so that you guys can enjoy this really fun um, faction for Infinity N4. Now, um, you guys have told me again and again that you quite like it when I do um, uh, purchase suggestions and we're going to launch into that right now so right over here here is the first thing that you would want to purchase if you are going to be playing um ikari company it is the tanko zensen butai uh, box set of the three tankos that has the missile launcher and the other two sculpts um, again, this is a faction that you might play if you already have collected a JSA faction and you want to branch out. That's the easiest way to get into the sectorial because you'll already have the basic units for your army and it's just a matter of expanding with one or two more purchases to make um, a carry company really playable. If you're starting from scratch, you might actually be interested in purchasing the, um, the actual box set for JSA we'll get to in a second. But no matter what you do, whether you're just buying models individually like brand new or you're purchasing a second-hand JSA or a curry company army or if you already have JSA it's just critical that you have this particular set because every single game that you'll play with a curry company should have your tankos in there and preferably all three that are available to you and we'll talk about their stats and abilities in a moment but just know that you're gonna need this Secondarily, um, the remotes pack, um, I will say that um, technically the army list says that they are the Pan-Oceania version of the remotes, but if you're a new player, I just want to tell you that statistically there's no difference in play between any of the remotes between the factions. For example, um, comparing the Pano ones to the Yuching ones or to the Hakuslam ones or anything like that. Um, there are some subtle differences when you get to like Nomads and uh, OSS, like a left. Some of them have climbing plus but look it just doesn't matter and what i'm trying to say here is that if you look at the the sculpts then the ranges and you look at the remotes pack for pano and look at the remotes pack for yu ching and for for alef and for hakslam and for nomads or for o12 just buy the the remotes that you think look the coolest and then paint them in your color scheme for the rest of the army and that will be fine nobody anywhere will ever 
give you any grief for using the wrong faction's remotes, just because they are almost indistinguishable from the other faction's remotes. So it's a, it's a mercenary faction. They're bringing in remotes from another faction anyway. Um, you know, the official ones are the Pano ones, so you can grab those, but don't let that stop you from buying the other ones. If I was starting from scratch, I'd probably get the... Um, the 012 ones actually because I personally am drawn most to those uh, designs I, I like them the best but um, the army builder does say get the pano ones all right so here is the JSA sectorial army pack I just want to zoom in on this one here um, just for a sec so this is this set of miniatures is designed for you to play JSA but I will point out that um, the Kaisotsus are usable in JSA and uh, they are actually quite a good link team for um, Ikari Company as well. Um, that biker in the background can't be used for Ikari Company, but Ikari Company will need your Jimbo and there's no reason why you can't use your Kuroshi Rider to proxy as your Jimbo, especially considering that when you're playing Ikari Company, you can't take a Kuroshi Rider. So there's no danger of anybody mistaking the Kuroshi for your Jimbo. It's clear what it is. Um, the, um, the Daokai here is actually a very good JSA unit and Ikari Company unit. So by purchasing this box, you've got the Dioko ready to go for either sectorial. Um, the, the Ryukin in the back here is not available in Akari Company, but that doesn't mean you couldn't just use it as, you know, a, a Tokusetsu Doctor. It looks very uh, comparable. Um, Mr. Rocket Launcher here, um, again, I mean, that is a JSA unit only, a Ryukin. But there are other models you could use that as. You could pretend it's a Kaisotsu Missile Launcher. You could pretend it's a Wuming Missile Launcher if you painted it up a bit differently. It's perfectly fine. Only weapon in the front here can't be used by Akari Company. That is a um, JSA unit. But Akari Company have access to ninjas. And the Oni Waban and the ninja look almost identical. So um, there's no harm in you just running that as a ninja. In fact, it's very, very appropriate. We have an HVT over here. Again, that's your HVT regardless of which faction you're playing. But it could easily be used as a Kaisotsu. Even a brawler, it could be used as, um, you know, a, a doctor or whatever. And this Kempai tie at the front here, again, that makes a perfectly good engineer or doctor or Kaisotsu. So if you're thinking about starting um, Ikari Company from scratch, this box set, if it's a good value for money box set, really recommend purchasing it because um, it's going to fulfill a lot of your needs very cost effectively. All right, so Wu Ming is the, the next uh, recommended pick. Um, you don't have to get them, but see, the Wu Ming are one of the two really viable core fire teams in Akari Company, and this is something that is not um, available in JSA, so it's something which makes you a little bit more unique and interesting as an Akari comp Company player. One uh, way I like to go is that if I'm going to be playing an event, for example, my Akari company strategy would really be to have one army list with a Kaisotsu link team and one army list with the Wu Ming link team because they're, 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 they're good for different things. The Wu Ming link team, my feeling is that they have the access to the HMG, which the Kaisotsu link team doesn't. And the HMG is, is a lot better at trying to uh, take down those big, uh, powerful enemy AROs, you know, your missile launchers and snipers and, and link teams. But they're a bit more expensive overall than the uh, the Kaisotsus. The other thing about the Wuming is that they are able to sort of move out and do that long, long sort of distance run um, and get there more effectively with the heavy armor two wounds. And when they get there, they're much better at close quarters with their shotguns and templates and things, whereas the Kaisotsus don't really have that. Uh, so they're a good alternative to have and you know if you just decided to buy, buy this box set of four that's not a mistake at all note that you can also have a Harris team of a couple of Woomings or like three of them alongside your Kaisotsu core so in the long term as your little career as a Nakari player you'll get plenty of mileage out of these guys Lastly, I do want to give a shout out to Scarface, who unfortunately has been quite maligned over the many years that he's been available. It's an old sculpt. Um, he was very weak in N3 just because of his cost, his, his lack of access to really good weaponry, and his flimsy armor. Things are a bit different now because um, they have buffed him. They've given him an armor-piercing gun. Um, Cordelia, as an engineer, is a little bit more useful um, in Ikari because, uh, as we're going to talk about, you may be wanting to run um, a Karakuri, which has structure points and remote presence and, like, freaking three wounds. 
So um, having a, an, an engineer in your army can double as a way of reviving Scarface, but also helping out your robots and, um, and Karakuri. So Scarface, although he kind of sucked up until a point, um, having him in one of your Akari lists is not bad. Like, it's actually a really decent um, selection for your, your army lists now. So I would not be, you know, criticizing you in any way if you liked the look of Scarface and decided to, to purchase him in your, you know, your start out um, collection for Akari Company, right? Cool. So there are other things you can buy, um, but it's sort of personal preference at this point. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through the, um, the, the whole faction and we'll have a conversation about what's hot and what's not in Akari Company as we go through this wonderful sectorial. All right, let's make my screen a little bit uh, more appropriate. Tankos, cool. This is a great place to start. As I mentioned, this is the, the number one thing that you want um, from your purchase selections and um, Amulus building. Let's make the screen a little bit bigger as well. Cool, okay. Now let's just bring that bring that back a bit. 110% is fine. I'm sure you guys can read that. So, um, Tankos, uh, the reason why they are so important is that they are extremely cost-effective with the cheapest profile being uh, also probably the best profile at just 17 points. And this is really crucial because you get heavy infantry quality stats, 6-2 speed, BS-13, Fizz-13, very important for dodging, decent willpower, armor and BTS reasonable, the two wounds is important, you're immune to shock. And at 17 points, you, it's costing the same as like a slightly more expensive line trooper. So already you're putting additional wounds on the battlefield. If you've got 15 troopers in your army and three of them are tankos, well, you're already sort of pumping out 18 wounds worth of guys. So if you, have, if you think about that, that's quite important. In the outfield, when they're using Impetuous, they're getting straight into the midfield without spending any orders. And uh, once they're there, their ability to dodge is pretty good at Fizz 13 and dodge plus one inch. And uh, unlike other heavy infantry that are sort of at these stats, if you look at, um, I don't know, Wu Ming, um, the Mobile Brigada, um, some of the, um, the Hakka Slam sort of BS 13 stuff, these guys are actually really insane in close combat as well as being just a normally competent um, trooper. And for some reason, they are uh, still extremely cheap, even though they are very, very good in close combat, and even though you've got Impetuous to move up the field, and, um, you know, the, the ability to dodge really, really well as well. So the, the problem that they pose for the opponent is that if the opponent's just trying to just hunt them down specifically and spend a lot of orders removing them and attacking them, it's going to take a few orders to do that, and after you've finally killed them, you've only taken out a 17-point model which is kind of a problem for the opponent. If you ignore them and they're dodging towards you or firing at you, they're either going to get into close combat, which is a disaster for the enemy, or if you're just trying to dodge away from them or just ignore them and they shoot you, where well, their guns are actually terrifying. The Flam and Spear, obviously continuous fire damage, has a template, good range, contender is double action, and these guys are BS-13, unlike a lot of, you know, um, BS-10, BS-11 warbands that start running around. So you kind of play these guys as if they are the warband uh, unit for the faction. Um, now, in addition to being good at all of the things I just mentioned, and even having a monofilament CC for removing important stuff if, if they let you get into close combat, the Tanko actually has um, link team ability. So when you combine all of the benefits I just talked about, plus the ability to go on link teams and form meaningful link teams, you can start to see why these guys are just so important. Um, so coming over here, there's a few ways to do it. One of my favorite uh, link teams here is the missile launcher guy who's going to appear inside of the Kaisotsu team, right? So um, very cheap missile launcher. The Kaisotsu is extremely cheap, but you're still putting out a guy who's effectively BS-16, has um, uh, six cents, has a devastating weapon, uh, has to take two wounds. He's in cover, um, armor three, got cover. You've got a doctor there to revive him. He's got the cube. Um, so it's it's pretty crazy there just to have such a cheap model um, hold down a really open battlefield and long fire lane without risking too much, which is something I really, really love. 
Um, in addition to that, you've got the other tankos here, usually a couple of flammer spears, con contenders kind of thing. You can have them free range, meaning they're just running around the battlefield doing the things that I mentioned before. Or if you want to, you can have all three of these guys in a Harris, or you can do what I like to do sometimes, where you'd have a uh, like a 15 point brawler along with these two to give them an additional burst. So your opponent can't really ignore them or walk past them if you're threatening them with a burst to ARO, Flamenspear, slash Contender, depending on the range band. And then in your active turn, you can actually do a bit of active turn shooting with them as well. Um, crazily enough, another strategy with these guys is to do a... Um, a coordinated order, for example, if you had a Daokai in there as well, or a Karakuri, you bring all four of these guys into the coordinated order with the command token, and they all four sh shoot from four different angles at the enemy, um, you know, sniper on a link team. Like, let's say they've got a Grenzer sniper with multi sniper. The Grenzer can only pick one of them as a target. And yes, maybe that model will go unconscious or take a wound, but with four guys firing Flammen Spears, Panzerfaust, Missile Launcher at that target, it's such an effective way and, and a risk-free way of getting rid of that, um, that ARO piece, which your opponent was relying on, and then you can walk across the battlefield with these guys. Um, so really useful strategy to make up the deficit between the, the, the level of class that your army is showing compared to what the opponent has, because there are some pretty dangerous sectorial out there but a tactic like that can do the job um, speaking of Diokos um, the Diokos can join the link team of Tankos you can have a Harris of them and have them as like a like the backup for the Diokai that's definitely a legit list and I guess I forgot to say earlier that one of the reasons why I like Akari Company so much is that there's several ways that you can build a list with them which is not really true of some of the sectorials in this game um, some of the sectorials that you play the list pretty much writes itself and there aren't really many other variations of of what you can do like if i'm building a list for onyx for example it's always just going to be the unidrons um you know there's not really much else you can do and um with with a curry company you got several different options so um i do quite like the, uh, like it about uh like that about them and the tankos are one of the reasons why that is the case they can be mixed and matched with a variety of different choices so as you can see never write in the carry list that doesn't have them try to take all three of them now here's the other option is the Wu Ming, and it's not necessarily an alternative option um, a lot of the time you can actually have the Wu Ming and the tankos so the Wu Ming, um unfortunately if you look at their stats they are worse at close combat and they have an additional point of armor but they cost like um twice as much which is crazy um so the tankos are definitely better than the wuming the 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 thing that the wuming have though that the tankos don't is access to certain kind of weapons that you may particularly like so the heavy rocket launcher is a different kind of weapon than the missile launcher the range bands are a little bit better and um, the HMG, of course, is something that the um, tankos don't have access to. So when I'm when I'm running Wu Ming, it's usually because of, of of one of these reasons. You also do have the super cheap profile here of the chain rifle SMG. Um, the tanko has the light shotgun SMG, which is comparable but way cheaper. So not really. Um, you know, comparable. The Wu Ming is just paying too much for that. But again, the HMG is such an important tool when you're playing Infinity that sometimes you're going to be wanting this anyway. So one way to go is to have like these two Wu Ming here, or even if you want a specialist, you pay a whole bunch extra for the boarding shotgun. Boarding shotgun flash pulse being a specialist, very, very good. So sometimes worth that extra five points. And if you want to keep the cost of them down, you can bring in a, a brawler. Or if you want to have the multi-sniper in that link team, you've got the, the extra tool there of, a, of an MSV um, multi-sniper, which has the link bonus. Um, some people are going to want to play the Wu Ming um, as a core, and that's fine. So if you're going to be doing that, my recommendation is have the HMG, have the heavy rocket launcher in there as well, or alternatively the Panzerfaust guy, just um, have that ARO option. I kind of like him. Um, a specialist is decent and then we're trying to keep the points value of this link team in check otherwise we're going to just use all of our points so brawler lieutenant that does the job of having a lieutenant in your army and then um, to really help with the points i'd go for the um the clipper just because i mean even though you may not be using it that much <coughs> 16 points to have that guy in the link team makes it worth it and in the late game if you're just standing him up as an aro having that additional heavy weapon there is decent um 
you know, if you've got if you've got the entire link team in place, he's B, he's, he's BS-15, he's firing two missiles, um, and uh, depending on what else you have in your army, you might occasionally get the chance to use a guided attack, probably not likely, but it's uh, it's possible, depends on what else you take. Righty. Mm -mm. Um, some people used to like this uh, multi-rifle wooming with the um, EM grenade launcher. I don't recommend that anymore, just because... Um, Grenade launchers have lost their plus three range band and now it's sort of just like a flat minus six. So getting this guy into position and getting things done with the EM grenade is not um, as likely. You might like the, t the firewall minus six. This is seriously not a bad option if you're really going to be playing a lot of games with the Wooming Core um, because spotlight is a real thing. Um, one problem we have in Infinity at the moment is people just using Bitten Kiss to land a picture next to your link team and then hacking you with Spotlight and blowing you up. The Firewall minus six can be very helpful there um, because you're going to be resetting and if if they're firing one dice using Spotlight at minus six, you've got a better chance of getting away from that. So that is definitely an option I wouldn't really criticize. So Wooming, pretty decent, uh, but there are no Tankos. Diokai though, let's have a look at the Diokai. So this guy used to be pretty bad. Um, I actually kind of like him now for a few reasons. He has received some buffs that are very important. Buff number one, he's a little bit more linkable than he used to be. Buff number two, he has NCO, which is a real big deal because um, this is a faction that's not really going to be using a, a lieutenant that's a fighter. It's going to be a Kaisatsu or a brawler just sitting in a link team trying to live. So this guy being able to use that order is important. Um, having two wounds in NWI uh, um, is very, very good. Um, and he brings this multi-marksman rifle, which is not something he had before, meaning that he's actually a pretty good point man for a team. The way I would run him is with the tankos. You take the tankos here, and I take the light shotgun blitzen guy and the flam and spear guy, so that you've got um, a variety of tools there. With this particular setup, a lot of the time, if you're just having that mid-range firefight to get rid of an ARO piece, the Diokai is doing that. If you're setting them all up, all up as AROs, you basically can have them all there. You've got the Panzerfaust, Blitz, and Flam and Spear. They've all got burst two. If you're just hiding in total cover in the midfield, all of these guys have that dodge ability, and they're all just devastating in close combat. And um, the, the Diokai's got effectively three wounds total that he sustains before he's removed from the table. Um, and you've spent 83 points here, which is not breaking the bank. Um, so if you like the miniatures of the Dioko and the Tanko, this is a really good setup. And um, they are effective at just trudging across the battlefield, setting up in the midfield, taking zones. They're effective at standing up and providing AROs, especially later in the game where your opponent can't really afford to just um, take them out one by one with a scalpel they are going to need to spend orders um, pressing buttons, getting into zones, and it's going to be so hard for them to do that with these three guys watching, if you've played um, played them carefully. They're not going to stand up very well to like a dedicated tag with multi-HMG or a guy with an HMG and a link team just spraying them down one by one. They're not going to be very good at that. There are other ways you can contend with that, like your Tanko Missile Launcher and the Kaisatsu link team or the Karakuri. Um, these guys, you do have to play them a little bit carefully, but if you put some thinking and some skill into it, they are very, very effective. Great. The Yuan Yuans used to be like a staple of um, of the Akari company, but I very rarely consider them anymore because um, of the changes to the unit cap. Now that you want to have um, 15 models in your army, the Yuan Yuans are sort of taking up slots in that, and what I'd rather be doing is having regular orders contributing to the models I want to move around rather than having these guys sort of like a one and done throw them away. Um, which is, yeah, it's it's tough. Um, one buff they've received is that they don't have to impetuous onto the board, so you could bring them on later in the game, which helps, but it's not really enough of a buff for me to really want to use them. Um, inherently, like if you just look at their stats and abilities, they're not. it's not like they're bad, so if you're taking one or two of them in your list, it's just not a bad thing. Um, but for them, I just don't think it's a really a, le a legitimate strategy anymore compared to other things that Ikari Company can do. The other thing that you were doing in N3 is that you'd have an Evo repeater, which would have the um, 
the um, the support wear up automatically, meaning they just enjoy a plus three to land with combat jump. Whereas the Evil Repeater now has to actually spin the order to put up the jump. And the Yuan ones um, are, are coming in with their Impetuous order ideally before that happens. So yeah, um, that kind of nerf has affected them a little bit too much for my liking. They're not terrible, but um, they're no longer sort of the focus. They're no longer the, the defining thing about Akari Company in my view. Drew's shock teams, um, they're still pretty bad. Um, I think of Akari Company as a choice between Kaisotsu Core or Wuming Core. Um, there is the third option, which is the Drew's shock team core. And honestly, um, I don't think that this is a good option. If you feel like you really have to take them, it's going to be about this guy here, the killer hacker um, with Pitcher. Um, then possibly um, the hacking device guy here, so you can put spotlight on somebody. Um, the clipper drone bot, so that you can actually uh, capitalize on that, that combination between spotlight and guided fire. Um, and then who else can join them? I think, can brawlers join them? Not even brawlers can join them. So that's kind of kind of lame. You're going to be looking for any wild cards you can, but I'm just not too sure if they have anything really that can can join in. So then you're putting in the HMG, which is kind of a must, and then possibly um, a sniper or a marksman rifle. Um, do they even have a sniper nowadays? You could take the um, grenade launcher, I guess, or the, the Panzerfaust. Probably just the cheap profile, I think. 129 points now th this is just a really really crappy link team um i mean bs12 uh for all of these points the x visor doesn't make a huge difference the bs damage bonus isn't huge and with just one wound no shock immunity um you know you're really playing with fire here as soon as your druze dies to a hacking attack or you get hit by um like a crit or something and your hmg goes down um, reviving them is a problem since the faction doesn't really have um, great paramedics. I guess you've got the Tokusetsu Doctor, but I mean, we'll look at the Kaisotsu Link Team later, and I think you'll see the difference in you know what you can achieve with that compared with how many points you're paying, and it's just a no-brainer. So my recommendation is not to use the Druze. Ninjas, um, ninjas are very useful. Um, I run a lot of lists that that just do not have them because the ninja is is really good midfielder with close combat but you've got other models that can do that now that you're going to be running your jimbo and the tankos possibly the daiokai models like that you've got that kind of role covered and um, for button pressing and specialists there are other things that can do that the ninja is still a good choice though if you know you're going to be playing missions that have button pressing in the midfield without exclusion zone or if you're playing a mission like unmasking that does have an exclusion zone but um, the hacker bonus for being a specialist is significant so that's where the ninja really shines i still don't think it's worth using any other profile other than the killer hacker tactical bow because it's so cost effective um, if you if you know that you're going to be facing a lot of people who really like tags and heavy infantry the hacking device is possible I mean if you're really running that wooming link team core with the clipper the ninja hacker is good synergy with that because if you if you get the surprise spotlight off you marked them for death with the clipper um, and that can work but it's an expensive profile and the the killer hacker really is the premium one and this isn't just theory. We've played hundreds and hundreds of games of Infinity now where everybody has tried the ninjas and it's the killer hacker ninja that everyone uses now because we, we just know from experience and from theory that um, it's the best profile to be using. Don't forget that the difference between AP and double action on the weapon matters for this unit and some of these profiles have that and some don't and critically the tactical bow uh, killer hacker is one of the ones with double action. Scarface, okay, a few things to say about these guys. Um, so importantly, this gives you access to an engineer um, that is a decent fighter and decent willpower. And engineers are relevant in this faction, not just for reviving Scarface, but for the Karakuri, which we'll talk about later. And for the likely, um, the bots that you'll have, you might even be the kind of player that likes to run a Rushi or Ludwan, in which case, again, you need an, um, uh, an engineer. So when you, when you pay the points for Scarface, 
you're getting a Cordelia in there for 17 points, which is an expensive engineer, but she can fight as a result of having Mimetism, and she does have a Chain Cult, so it's not, you know, wasted points, and having an engineer is something you're probably going to be wanting to take anyway because of the reasons I mentioned. The real question is, which of these loadouts do you want? At, at sort of mid-60s, you're getting a, a decent tag. Armor 7's a little bit on the flimsy side, and he doesn't have remote presence, but he's got a bunch of other things that, that make him a really decent tag, and um, we'll talk about that now. So, um, Mark 12 plus 1 burst, and Heavy Rocket Launcher plus 1 burst, that's a nice ARO piece. It's the most expensive of them, um, but if you're responding with a ARO, the Heavy Rocket Launcher is a really, really good one. Reason why I don't like that profile is it doesn't have armor piercing, uh, whereas the other two of them do. And the other two profiles do have armor piercing on a cheaper um, points cost at 64 rather than 68, which does matter. You might not think four points matters for a tag. It does. Four points is, is kind of huge in list building when you get to competitive. Um, so reason why AP is important is because if you're fighting another tag or if you're fighting like a heavy like a um, Knight of Justice and a Link Team with a Missile Launcher, you kind of need it. Otherwise, you know, you risk having to spend too many orders or, you know, you, you continue that face-to-face -face roll shootout for too long and they eventually get a crit on you. You just don't want that happening. Other thing is that in the reactive turn, um, these other loadouts, the Beta and Gamma loadouts, have the Panzerfaust, which means he still does have a reasonable um, ARO piece to launch back at them. So missing out on the Heavy Rocket Launcher isn't too big a deal. So now if we're comparing the AP HMG and the AP Spitfire, you might be drawn to the Spitfire because of plus one burst. Five dice is a lot better than four dice. I still prefer the beta loadout with the HMG though. And the reason why I like that version is because a tag is typically going to be deployed in the middle of your deployment zone and you know there are going to be these fire lanes on the battlefield and your opponent will be locking down the long fire lane with their missile launcher or their sniper and they're going to be deploying their piece in such a way that it's going to make it hard for you to get to within that shorter range band where they are weak. And because they are going to do that, you need something which can actually hit them between the 16 to 32 range band, and the HMG does that, the Spitfire doesn't. So if you, if you like the idea of the plus one burst, consider this. What's better, having four dice at you know normal bliss skill hitting on 13s, or five dice, having the penalty of long range and cover. Um, and you're hitting on sevens on five dice. If I'm thinking four dice on 13 versus five dice on sevens, my preference is to have the four dice on 13s. And I will add the little point that the HMG has slightly higher damage, which again, does make a difference if you're trying to cut through the kind of thing your opponent is leaving as an arrow piece, which is usually something with armor. Armoured units usually are better as ARO pieces when you're picking that tool. So that's my argument for loadout beta with the APHMG. You're welcome to try the other ones, but if you want my recommendation, that is the recommendation. Um, Scarface, the pilot, has a boarding shotgun, which is really cool, and he has got Berserk as well, which is really fun. He's a specialist, so don't forget to pop him out of Scarface if Scarface is unconscious, because you're allowed to bring Joe out of the body. Or if you're in a bit of a bind and you need a specialist, Joe can jump out and grab a button. He can do that. Um, lastly, don't forget that this is a tag that is kind of cheaper than other tags, and it's better in close combat than most other tags. Being able to berserk means you can charge across 10 inches of space and whack them with a CC22 up to 25 Berserk plus 3 roll with a double action close combat weapon. So if they're sitting there with like um, a miniature that has minus 6 mimetism and an AP close combat weapon and they're really good in close combat and they're causing you a problem, you can't shoot at them very easily, charge over, whack them in close combat with Berserk, they will hit you maybe once, and you'll take maybe one wound, and they will just die, because you're hitting them with, you know, one dice, which could be a crit, 25% chance, physical 16, with a double action close combat weapon, um, it's pretty nasty, so don't forget about the ability to Berserk them with this guy, and that's one of the reasons why he's much better than he used to be. Brawlers. Um, overall, brawlers are a low quality unit. They are over costed. But there are a couple of profiles to look out for here that you kind of need to know about if you're playing a lot of Akari Company. 
one option here is the lieutenant. Um, he's a he's a bad lieutenant because he's willpower twelve, um, and you pay fifteen points for him. Um, but when he's joining a link team that's very expensive, like uh, two tankos plus the brawler, you're basically bringing in a unit that costs less than the other members, but you're still conferring the bonuses. So your brawler hides the other two guys do the work. Or if it's a um, fire team of Kaisatsus, um, you can bring in that multi-spectral visor guy, or he can go with you know the um, the, the the Harris, for example. Um, or if, if it's just a matter of, of just filling out that Harris, you can take the, the normal rifle. So these three right here are the are the options: the standard rifle, the lieutenant version, or the MSV uh, to a multi sniper. The engineer and the doctor, the hacker, don't take those profiles ever. Maybe the okay, so maybe the hacker SMG if you really need to do like unmasking and have the hacker bonus. But in general, there are other models in this army which do those roles cheaper. You have access to the Tokusetsu Doctor or Engineer. They only cost 14 points compared to the Brawler spending like 19 points. And the um, Tokusetsu is actually willpower 13. These guys are willpower 12. So don't be taking these options, please. I mean, you look at Cordelia, who's two points less than this Engineer, and she's strictly better. Uh, it's just pretty crazy. Now let's talk about this MSV2 Sniper. Um, the important thing about this is that we're playing a, a sectorial that has your Jimbo in it um, and um, Desperados. So those bikes can plant the smoke. You can shoot through the smoke with the MSV2 and you have that benefit. You also have the benefit of having a really long range gun, um, a multi-sniper, that's very important. And BS12 can get the job done if you've got that plus one burst, so three dice and 12s. Or if he's in the Kaisotsu link team for a maximum of BS15 three dice. So one um, loadout that I like to play is the Tanko Missile Launcher, the Brawler Multi-Sniper. Then I go down and I grab the three Kaisotsus, which we'll talk about later, looking like this. So this is my Kaya core fight, fire team in a lot of Akari lists. The Tanko is the one that's going to be standing up in partial cover for mo most of the game. But the Brawler may be doing some of the active turn shooting because you move out with your Jimbo, you plant the smoke in front of your link team, the brawler stands up, um, the only thing that can see it, well nobody can, can see it if you've done the job correctly, then you shoot at the enemy target with BS-15 three shots, and that's better than the tanko, uh, because A, the tampo, tanko can't see through smoke, but the tanko's only two shots, and um, that's a great way of nailing some enemy targets like, um, you know, a Mandley Muet or a Noctifer, just things like that which are gonna, ordinarily going to be quite tough to deal with, or enemy Ryukin for example, just that kind of thing, um, you know, Crocman, um, the Trinitarian, so many enemies that are just going to be dealt with so neatly and tidily um, if you have that brawler in this link team. Um, you can put him alternatively with the uh, the couple of um, the Tankos, but I kind of like him to have that reliable fire team core backing him up. So brawlers have their place in the sectorial, which is nice. Um, again, heavy rocket launcher. Um, just doesn't do that same job. Um, having MSV is really the uh, the kicker there, and if you really like the heavy rocket launcher, you should be thinking about whether you'd prefer the Wooming to be holding the heavy rocket launcher with more armor, extra wound, higher ballistic skill, that kind of thing. Um, other thing as well is that the Tankos with Flamage Spears, uh, again, are sort of doing that job. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, let's move on. So Ninjas, we kind of talked about these guys already. Sorry, no, I've already gone through them. We're down to Pathfinder Drone Bots now. So, this is pretty generic. Um, there, There's nothing in, in particular about Akari Company that really requires you to have these guys. You might be wanting just to fill a 15-point gap. They're no different from their role than any other faction. If you're struggling a lot against um, people who use camo markers, these guys can be good. They're also quite a quick specialist. But other than that, nothing special to say about them. Sierra Drone Bot, again, you might be a little bit short on HMGs. Like, if you're not running Scarface, not running the Wu Ming, if you've just got the Tankos, Daokai, that kind of thing, it's not a bad idea to take the Drone Bot, um, because if you've got the um, the Tokusetsu Engineer already, with maybe a, um, a Yao Zhao to help out for reviving your Karakuri, the Sierra Drone Bot's not a bad idea for that active turn and reactive turn shooting. 
with your um, your HMG. If you really like the idea of taking a few Yuan Yuans and having control jump and bringing them on in the second turn, then having that Evo repeater put a sister fire in your drone bot might be an idea. Um, or you might be playing a Rushi, um, which is going to hopefully have the Evo repeater backing him up. Having the uh, uh, the the, um, the Sierra gives you an alternative option to receive that support where. Armand Lemuet, I feel like he's a little bit overkill if your faction already has all of those linked Flam and Spears, Panzerfaust, Missile Launcher, you know, you name it. Um, this guy's just another ARO piece which might not be needed. He is quite a good piece of anti Ariadne tech though with his MSV1, uh, his ability to sustain that extra um, extra hit thanks to his symbiont armor. And he's, he's quite nasty against something like um, a Spetsnaz because he's got the Mimitism minus six, yet he ignores the enemy's um, the camo penalty. So if you play a lot of Ariadna, this guy can be a pretty good choice. But again, he's, he's sort of fighting for the job, really, against um, a lot of other Akari units, which are good as sort of single-piece ARO units. So just be careful about that. He's cost a lot of points, and you may be short of models which can really get into the enemy's face and do a lot of damage to them um, on their side of the table. So Clippers, um, pretty standard, really. The weakness of the Clipper in this faction is that you don't have a lot of guys that can really hack the enemy and get the spotlight done. So that's sort of a disadvantage there. But the strength of the Clipper is being able to join the Wooming Link team and... Because the weakness of the, the Wu Ming is they don't really have any guys that are particularly cheap to keep the overall cost of the, the Link team managed, the Clipper is going to be able to do that. So the Clipper, I think, is more for the points cost uh, savings than the actual guided missile attack. And don't be afraid to use them normally, like just standing up and shooting with two dice and a Link team and trying to blow them up that way. That's another way that you can get the, the mileage out of them. For Ghazis, it's just a shame they're only AVA1 in this uh, sectorial, so you're still going to be taking them a lot of time just as a cheerleader to fill out the points. Um, nothing wrong with them, as always. Uh, we come to the Kaisotsus. So these guys are important, and one reason why I personally like um, Ikari more than JSA is that the Kaisotsu, for some reason, can have the Tanko join them and the Brawler join them. So by themselves, if you run an HMG, Missile Launcher, Lieutenant, Paramedic, and just a Combi Rifle, this is a super cheap Link Team, but it's just a, a very weak Link Team because in active turn, your BS-10, you go up to 13, 5 dice on 13s. It's very difficult to beat a Kamau Sniper or something like that shooting shooting down a Noctifer just because your BS attack is so low and the guys are just so squishy if they do get hit. Reactive turns the same, you've got a missile launcher, but it's BS-13. If you get shot at by a bulleteer or anything like that, Achilles, you know, your chances of winning that face-to-face -face role are still really, really low. So you, you get what you pay for, it's a very cheap link team, but there's a way that you can cheat here. Drop the HMG, drop the missile launcher, and again, like we said before, you bring in the Tanko, which suddenly becomes a Ballistic Skill 16 Missile Launcher. And it has a bit of armor, it has an additional wound, so you can actually hang out there. You've got courage, you know. You can actually um, actually fight back very well with that Tanko, and the Tanko is still relatively cheap. Then you bring in the Brawler, you've got a Multi-Sniper, so active turn, you can benefit from smoke, you can shoot through the smoke, you've got Ballistic Skill 12. And you're not paying an incredibly high amount. In fact, the Tanko and the Brawler are the same points here. So at 83 points, I find this is a very efficient link team, and that's um, partly because of the, the the cheap cost of the Kaisatsus. You pay 0.5 SWCs for the Lieutenant and only Willpower 12, but I find them to be the better Lieutenant option compared to the Brawler. Where's, where's the Brawler? Let's have a look. So Lieutenant Brawler, 15 points. Um, the advantage of the Brawler is that you're not spending any SWCs, so if you really need the SWCs for heavy weapons elsewhere, you take the Brawler. But if you don't need them, the Kaisatsu is better because he's the same willpower and you save a massive six points there between the two profiles, which really is significant. And it's for the same willpower value, which is the only stat that you really care about if you are running a lieutenant. <sighs> hmm. Bashi Bazooks. These guys are a, uh, a strong unit for their points cost. The really interesting one here is the, the cheapest one, the SMG Chain Colt. I think the other specialists, uh, sorry, the other um, profiles do all have their value. 
The one that interests me the least, I think, would be the straight-up AP rifle, because it's got no sidearm. You want the unit to be able to shoot with a face-to-face -face roll or a direct template weapon, and the other guys can typically do that. So all the shotguns can turn into templates. Um, the uh, This guy's got a chain cold. I guess the combi EM mines is also not that great because he can't do that. So these two profiles here, and they're also a little bit more expensive. So if, we, if we're choosing a Bashi Bazook, it would normally be one of the other profiles. This guy's a specialist, only willpower 12 though. So if you really need that um, coming on from the side of the board specialist, that would be your pick. But that's not usually what he's for. This guy's a harassment piece, and he can usually trade up with something else that may be important. You bring the guy in with the hollow mask, they might have to shoot at the wrong hollow echo. You can use the hollow echoes to detonate mines, which is a really powerful thing about this guy. Then you move into line of sight of an enemy target, and you're trying to hit them with a couple of shots from the boarding shotgun, light shotgun type of thing. And if they um, are shooting back at you, you just let rip with two templates, and that might allow you to take out a lieutenant or a critical specialist or you know a one wound model that happened to cost you know 30s 40s kind of points um, or a damaged heavy infantry unit so this guy can pay dividends just got to be careful about him and uh, plan your list around him a little bit um, hopefully you're not going to be needing him uh, if he's going to be staying off the table for a turn or two um, but definitely a strong unit here in my opinion don't forget about a surprise attack as well it can be a useful way of winning face-to-face -face rolls Yojimbo. So Yojimbo is the smoke thrower of the list. Um, you could take the uh, Desperado instead for just six points, which is the budget version. But if you can afford it, Yojimbo is better because unlike the Desperado, he comes with a bit of a toolbox and he's more resilient. So having NWI, being immune to critical, being better at dodging, being far better in close combat, means this, this guy is the premium version really of the biker that lays the smoke. He's very quick, has that crazy koala with him. So you definitely get value for the additional points you're paying. It's not like the Desperado is doing the same job for cheaper. That's not the that's not the uh, comparison there. Your Jimbo really is value for money at just 18 points. Look at him like you'd look at the Tanko. You know, the Tanko is resilient in the same way, also good at close combat and has a lot of dangerous things it can do. Yojimbo has been a very powerful piece throughout Infinity in general. If you're going to be playing a lot of Akari Company and you don't have that JSA starter box with the Kuroshi Rider in it, maybe just go out and buy Yojimbo as a standalone model. Um, he's a very good model. Um, and uh, the way you're going to be using him is just to really hide him in total cover. Then when it's your turn, move out with Impetuous. Have hopefully an alleyway where he can move without being shot at. Throw the smoke grenade down in front of your brawler multi-sniper or something like that. And it allows you to advance, shoot through smoke, get him into the midfield, set up a new crazy koala, and just cause a lot of trouble. As you guys may remember from my um, my, my video series about INZO, we have the whole idea of him actually declaring a close combat attack before he can see the enemy model. Forces them to do something other than a ballistic skill attack because they can't declare a ballistic skill attack if they can't see you. And then you simply ride around with your movement 8 and whack them in close combat. Just because there's a loophole in the rules at the moment, this guy's very good at taking advantage of that. So, um, really good piece in my opinion. Um, nothing to not like about him, honestly. Um, very, very good uh, unit. And speaking of very good units, Karakuri... Uh, it's just a very special unit now. It used to be a little bit sort of borderline, but now I think it's it's a must. Um, my personal favorite is the multi-rifle. Um, so this, this is a miniature which is extremely resilient and annoying for the enemy to deal with, while not really costing that many points. It can be as tough as a tag um, and only half the points. And I say that because total immunity means that it's not going to be affected by armor piercing or double action rounds or anything like that. And uh, once it does get re reduced to zero wounds, structure points that is, uh, it's got remote presence. So unless they're inflicting like five wounds on it, it is not going to be removed from the board. You can repair it and it's back up again. Unlike a tag, it actually has a really good range of options. So if they are right in front of you, eight inches away or less, you've got the chain rifle. If they're 8 to 16 away, you've got the multi-rifle double action round. And this is the why I like the multi-rifle the best, is because it covers that one gap in its range band that these other options don't. 
if it's something which is a little bit further away, like 16 to 32, you fire the, the, the Panzerfaust, right? Um, you even have the Flash Pulse there if you want to, um, if they are coming around with like a tag and you know that they're going to just cripple your back line unless you stop them. Hitting them with a stun, if that manages to work, you could shut down their entire push and that kind of play could be game winning if it, if it works. So don't be afraid to use that option. Her weakness is close combat and their ability to dodge. So that's the problem. If you're being shot at by an HMG, she is going to crumble, but you're going to be trying to shoot that Flash Pulse or that Panzerfaust, and um, eventually you're going to um, be shot down, but she can just take so much punishment on behalf of the rest of the team, and then hopefully you've got that Tokusetsu Engineer or Cordelia, preferably with a Yao Zhao next to her to revive her. Then when it's your turn, if they haven't killed your Karakuri, she can move up, she can lay the chain rifle in their face, and she can press buttons because she's a forward observer, which is crazy. So um, 42 points might seem like a bit to spend on her, but if you're factoring in the three wounds, the total immunity, the remote presence, the awesome arsenal of guns, you've just got to admit that this is a very, very good unit. Just be careful again. Close combat, not good. Dodging, not good. She is hackable. So be a little bit careful with the unit. You don't really want to throw away the unit, even though she's relatively cheap. You don't want to just lose her or have her neutralized for no reason. Um, but a brilliant unit um, for AROs, just being a roadblock, a big speed bump. And um, if anybody's going to be, you know, a part of a coordinated order, this is a great model to have included because, like we said, one Karakuri, two Tankos, and maybe um, the third tanker or Wu Ming or, or even your tag, if they are in a coordinated order together, they're all launching a Panzerfaust or a Flamen Spear. And if you nominate that one arrow, which could normally be quite difficult to deal with, like the Grenzer Sniper, Bolt Sniper, something like that, you can crush them. And that's uh, like a secret weapon of this sectorial, which I really like. Um, Tokusetsu. This is just a nice, cheap, standard Doctor Engineer, which is exactly what you want exactly what you want so a lot of lists are just going to have both of these guys the doctor and the engineer because the doctor is going to support the tankos um you have the doctor standing next to the or, or just lying prone next to the missile launcher tanko with a yao zhao further afield to help out the flam and spear tankos then your engineer is just going to stay right next to the karakuri if you have a yao zhao for it it's also going to be backing up um, maybe your Sierra John bot or your Flash Pulse bot or something like that. You may not need a Yao Zhao if you don't have those troops. But for 14 points, um, it's just a really good solid piece. Extra specialist for, for pressing buttons later in the game. They've still got their Medikits, Gizmo Kits, and don't forget to use those. Gizmo Kit will work on the Karakuri. So this may save you from taking paramedics and um, definitely want these guys if you've got the Karakuri Tangos, which you're usually going to have. Um, just don't ever take the brawler version of these guys, or um, I think there's a Drew's paramedic or something like that. Just don't take that. No, Drew's don't even have a paramedic. There you go. So it's going to be the Tokusetsu. Rushi um, is still a very good robot. Um, I like this guy in, in 3. He's now a little bit less desirable because assisted fire doesn't give you shock. So a Spitfire trying to take down... Um, you know, some of these uh, Steel Phalanx guys and some of these uh, Shazvasti people that really you'd want to remove outright, but you can't do it anymore. It's kind of like a little bit of a, a downer for the Rushi. Also, the Spitfire doesn't have armor piercing, and we're currently in a sort of bit of a meta where armor piercing is kind of useful now. But don't let that dissuade you from taking the Rushi. It's still um, a strong unit. It's very positive. You do have um, access to smoke throwing in the form of your Jimbo. So the, the Rushi is not bad. Again, if you play a lot of people who like Steel Phalanx, Ariadna, that kind of thing, and you're just losing games to um, constant uh, mimetism users, the Rushi um, is useful, and it's a very cheap unit. So um, I'm not going to say it's bad here, but my preference is the Brawler Multi-Sniper because it's got the access to double action or AP, and it's just a little bit more of a bully um, with the Link Team bonuses. The Lu Duan, um, this is also quite a fun unit. Um, people have often liked this guy for his toolbox and his ability to, um, to Hollow Mask. Um, usually you would be pretending that this guy is like an Evo repeater or a baggage bot. That would be the way to do it. You can pretend that he's a motorbike, but you kind of, um, it gives it away when you, you know, you're, you're impetuous, for example. So there's not many people that you can pretend to be. I'd really run him as, um, like just a Minesweeper bot or an Evo bot if you're pretending to, to hollow mask with him. 
Um, a better way to do it is just to use the hollow projector from the outset and have three of them so your opponent doesn't know what's what. When you're moving up the field, that hollow projector is great for clearing um, like hollow echoes, uh, sorry, um, uh, crazy koalas, mad traps, mines, brilliant for doing that. Um, it's not bad at shooting. MSV One's better now in this edition, thanks to seeing through smoke. And mine layer is something it didn't really have before. Um, uh, hazard deployable repeater. Um, unfortunately, it's not particularly strong in this faction. It's more of a sort of a Yuching vanilla trick to have that repeater out because they've got more hackers. Um, but hey, I mean, if you're actually running some hackers, for example, uh, uh, maybe the War Driver version or possibly the Ninja Killer Hacker having the ability to deploy a repeater with your Luduan is not nothing. Yao Zao's and you need those if your doctor or engineer needs to be in a couple of places across the deployment zone to heal two sets of, you know, wounds unit or structure points units. The War Driver, um, like, it seems like a bit of a lame unit when you first glance at it, but if you're playing a mission like Unmasking, this guy is actually quite good because if you need a specialist, this guy is extremely cheap. Willpower 13 is decent. Um, boarding Shotgun is a very good weapon now. Six Sense is a very good skill. Flash Pulse is actually very, very useful. So 12 points, the Zero Pain version, um, gives you all of those things and is actually quite a, quite a useful thing for a mission like Unmasking. The standard Boarding Shotgun guy, one SWCs is a bit much. I, I find that that's not great and he's not linkable. But um, if you've got spare SWCs, this guy's not a bad hacker because he's going to do it better than the Kaisotsu's going to do it. Um, so, I mean, they're not terrible. Um, I wish that these guys could go on a Harris or something like that, or a Duo, so you can bring them along with you. But again, if you're playing a mission where hackers get a bonus, um, this guy's decent. Um, especially on a bit more of a dense table where you're moving up through the terrain, you're hitting that button with your hacker, and then you're hanging out in the midfield. Um, it's harder for them to just eliminate him with a kill hacker because he's got zero pain, an upgrade to defend. Um, and in the midfield, he can trade with something which costs way more than 12 points if he's got a boarding shotgun. So they're not bad. They're really not bad. Um, the Pangwilling, um, interestingly, I, like, I don't know how to explain this, guys, but they've brought in the FTO version without saying that it can link with anybody. That, that kind of annoys me. I feel like they've just done a co copy-paste from, like, Invincible Army or whatever it is that actually has this guy in a link team. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't be taking this guy. The Light Shotgun's nice, but he's just going to be sitting in your deployment zone, so not really a good idea. Um, so a bit of a, a wasted opportunity. It'll be cool if, like, you could make a special Harris Link team with... I don't know, um, the Drews, for example, like the FTO can join, join the Drews shock teams that'll make the Drews a little bit more viable. So the Evo Repeater um, is going to be useful if you're taking the Yuan Yuans or if you're going to be um, putting Assisted Fire on Arushi, Sierra Dronbot, and Clipper. So for example, if, you, if you're the kind of person that likes the Luduan or the Rushi, one way you can play the Sectorial is to actually have the Sierra with the Wu Ming and the Rushi, and the Luduan, and a Sierra Dron bot, and you have the Pangolin, and you can bounce around the support where, and that's that's a situation where you would want to have that Pangolin Evo. Don't take the total reaction combi, just not worth it. Sorry, just it just isn't. Um, the baggage bot, it's only eight points, it's a good cheerleader, and it is actually useful if you are putting them next to the Tankos who have disposable guns, like the, the Flam and Spear, um, the Blitzen, the, the um, Panzerfaust from the Wu Ming, Dioko's Panzerfaust, the Karakuri's Panzerfaust. Having that baggage bot next to them is handy because if you've got a spare order, you guys, you guys can actually just reload off of them. And um, because the eight points is just being a cheerleader anyway, it's just a nice little extra bet that you can add to your troops. Um, being able to reload their guns and don't forget about his baggage ability when you're playing a quadrant control style mission where you're moving um, your model into a zone like frontline where he'll give an extra 20 points towards that uh, mission objective the alpha seed um, love the model um, brilliant looking model here um, unfortunately he is a bit too expensive and he's just outshined i'm sorry to say by the Tankos and the Wu Ming and the Daiokai. So this guy's a similar kind of points value to the Daiokai. Daiokai is more durable because he's got NWI and the Daiokai is way better in close combat. Um, and the Daiokai has sort of similar kind of guns. 
so it's really hard to justify taking this guy um, and then when you look at the HMG um, Scarface is just a little bit more expensive but Scarface is tougher um, you know he's got an AP HMG instead uh, he's faster it just doesn't really make sense to take the Alpha C this, this unit needs to have some other ability in there to make him um, a little bit more viable or he just needs to cost less like like five points less at least otherwise he just doesn't compare to the other roles that the other units uh, play just better than he does again if he could be in like a Harris then you start to consider him but we already compared him to the Diokai who is better so you got the Diokai that's better and the Diokai can join a link team on top of being better statistically so it's just a sad day to be an alpha seed at the moment I'm sorry Desperados. So if you are desperado for some <laughs> some point savings, this guy is very, very good. Um, he does that job that uh, is sort of like the main job of Yojimbo, which is to go out and impetuously throw smoke. That's like the number one role. This guy does that as well, um, and he's way cheaper. Sadly, this guy doesn't come with your NWI, doesn't come with a long-range gun. Um, he doesn't come with, you know, that ultra-powerful cl close combat ability, even though he is good in close combat ability combat if you just don't have the the points to afford your jimbo do take this guy instead especially if you do have a rushi or a, um, a brawler sniper because his ability to put smoke down is still quite high and the a assault pistol version is is really really nice because if you do manage to get him across to the side of the other battlefield you have that sort of fork where they are choosing between two arrows and they're going to get it wrong either way they direct template weapon you in which case you spray them with the assault pistol five dice or if they're dodging, um, sorry, yeah, if they're dodging, if they if they dodge, you assault pistol. If they shoot you, you can lay the chain rifle. And that's how you're going to trade a six-point unit for what will probably be a very expensive unit on their side, uh, making this guy really, really valuable. Um, yep, we can talk about the other profiles. I just don't recommend them. Um, there's something good to say about them all, but at the end of the day, just purely the ability to um, choose between five dice at short range or that one template is just huge and it's the cheapest profile along with this one heavy pistol um you know three burst against five burst that's really all i can say about it honestly that's that's the only thing i can really compare there a couple of other handy abilities like six cents dodge plus one they'll come up sometimes but not all the time it's more just about the cheap smoke and authorized bounty hunters so um these guys can't join a link team like they can in um, a faction like Dashant Company, so I wouldn't really be seeing these guys in this sectorial. If you do have a spare 12 points, it's usually going to go into one of the cheap bots or another Kaisatsu or something like that. If you really have to, you know, spend 12 points because that's exactly what you've got, this particular profile here is the best one to take. But um, realistically, there are going to be better choices for you. And without being able to link the sky, it's just not very appealing in this sectorial. I'm sorry. Bounty Hunters are more of a um, more of a Deshaun Company sort of choice, um, as you guys probably already know. The Warcore, obviously, very very good if you've got that spare three points. Um, don't make the mistake of taking a Warcore if you can take a Yao Zhao instead, and you've already got fifteen models in your army. The Warcore is really just like it's like an afterthought. It's a very good unit and brilliant for protecting your backline with the Flash Pulse. I prefer the three sixty visor, but again, he's more of an afterthought. Krakot Renegades. Um, so, th again, this is not a model that you build your list around. He's not one of the first things you put into your list when you're building it. Um, really, you're going to be wanting to spend the points at this sort of bracket on the Tankos. The Tankos kind of do this guy's job a bit better than he does nowadays because they're more durable and they're better long-range fighters. Um, back in 3rd edition, I would take the Red Fury quite a lot, but now that armor piercing and, and damage of guns matters a bit more, I'd go for the Chain Rifle plus one burst, since he's better at trading. This guy has been weakened a little bit because the Metachemistry chart isn't the same as Metachem 2, which is, it used to be the thing, and um, his ability to Berserk um, isn't at plus six anymore, it's just the straight 23, um, and this profile here doesn't have chest mines, but if you want chest mines, you have to pay, pay more points for them now. So he's a little bit of a harder sell. He's still good, don't get me wrong, but he's a harder sell. Also, jammers are less popular than they used to be, so veteran isn't going to come up as much. 
Um, so yeah, just not as appealing. I will note that you can run him with Kendrat, and we'll talk about Kendrat next. Uh, we'll come to the Cube Jaeger in a moment, but Kendrat um, is a kind of unit that, um, again, it, it works similarly to the Krakot, but um, the problem with Kendrat is, again, it's going to be kind of doing the same sort of job that your Tankos, your Daokai, your Karakuri, your Ninja are kind of going to be wanting to do. So when you're in a sectorial where there's a, like an abundance of models that do that job, you're going to be desperately looking around for things that can actually um, do something else. Like this, this sectorial is missing things that can really just deploy very close to the enemy line and just kill them. Um, so you don't have any impersonators, stuff like that. There's no peacemaker. That's where the sectorial kind of struggles a little bit. Kendrat has got to sort of get over the other side of the battlefield. So for deployment four helps... Um, meta chemistry um, is not really a thing. She's just straight up got NBW, immunity, total, dogged, which are really good abilities, but it's just the speed of her. Getting across the battlefield without dying first can be hard. And at 22 points, you're not always going to be trading up. You might just run into some sort of warband that hits you with a chain rifle and you don't quite get the value you want. So it's a bit of a feast of fam famine unit. You could really crush them with some of the abilities this thing has. It's a lot of points though for what you're trying to do. So I would stick to, you know, having your Jimbo, having the Tankos, having the Karakuri, having that kind of thing. Um, you can try this this duo out, but it's not really a premium kind of overpowered um, piece at the moment. There are other things you're going to be wanting to leverage. The Cube Jaeger, um, I, I personally like the Bashi Bazooka a bit better. The Bashi Bazook's kind of doing that job. And the thing about the Bashi Bazook is you've got that hollow echo to clear out the things that are there to defend against this kind of this kind of move. So the hollow echoes are detonating the mines, crazy koalas, that sort of thing, and the the flushing enemy units out of camo to try and discover you. And then the Bashi Bazook's got that template, right? So you come in there and you've got either the the shots or the template. The Cube Jaeger has to spend the 21 points for the boarding shotgun to be able to do that. He's got a monofilament CC weapon, but only CC 16. It's a hard sell for me. Um, the medikit may be nice if you're coming on the side of the table and firing the medikit at a tanko or something like that, but it's corner case, it's situational. It's not gonna come up every game. So um, in my view, the Bashi Bazook, the, um, the, the, um, the Yuan Yuan, those are better choices than this guy. Um, he's not terrible, but I just don't think he's a better option than what we just talked about. Motorized Bounty Hunters, these guys are new. Um, again, this is a nice little profile here for Booty and the Chain Cult Plus One Burst. I would still recommend the Desperado though, because the Desperado has smoke. The Motorized Bounty Hunter doesn't. The Desperado has close combat ability. This bike doesn't. So your ability to trade things up with the Desperado is just better. Uh, it's more cost effective. Um, this is sort of like a profiler really bringing in for the Frozen Road sort of season and just sell some excess stock they've got of the Bounty Hunter bike. So it's it's more really if you're the kind of person that likes playing ITS and you, likes the, you like the bike recon rule, I wouldn't really be going out of my way to include this profile in a straight up Akari Company list given the other options that you have. Cool, so we've just run over an hour. Um, really enjoy the sectorial. Um, I love the models. I love the diversity. Um, I love the, the options for list building. It's the kind of thing where I, I go back to the army and I, I come up with a slightly different way of playing it, which is really entertaining because half of the gameplay experience is happening on Army Builder and half of it's happening on the tabletop, and I quite enjoy that. Um, other sectorials, like I mentioned, I keep coming back to them and I can't think of a better army list that I like more than the one I wrote last week. But Ikari Company gives you a bit more um, room to improve and to uh, discover things you didn't really know before about ways to win. All right, guys. Well, enjoyed bringing the sectorial review as always. Uh, enjoy your games and uh, see you in the Discord.